So are there any struggles that you're facing post, um, post-transplant? It, yeah, it's a good question. So, you know, the, the likelihood of rejection uh, is always a possibility. Um, and so I, I think one of the things that often you know, people think about is just you you get a new organ and then you're sort of off to the races and you know knock on wood that that is the case but there there is a, a risk of rejection so uh you know monitoring for that is a is a really important part particularly in the first three months uh you sort of see rejection in that first 48 hours at seven days 14 days and then three months you're sort of out of the woods um you know the, the physical aspect as well like i have this big scar they've cut into my abdomen um, I had a number of, you know, drains coming out of me. Uh, I had a stent inside of me, so there was some sort of post-op stuff that had to be had to be done. Um, one of the sort of biggest changes was I had a, a catheter or a port uh, inside of me for dialysis, a, a central line, which was taken out, and um, which has, you know, given me the ability to shower uh, for the first time in three months. Which, you know, I didn't know that I loved showering so much until I didn't have the ability to do it. Um, and then, you know, just being slow to, to walk, uh, you know, I, I don't have the mobility that I used to have and that will come back over time, but, you know, really focusing on, on movement and making sure that I am uh, being as physically active as I am able for the first three months and then, you know, a bit more so after three months, uh, I think will be a really important part of, of my recovery. And then the most important part to make sure my kidneys are being treated the way they would like to be treated as just drinking tons and tons of water. No matter where they are on their spectrum, our viewers, you know, whether they're in chronic kidney disease stage, on dialysis, transplant, post-transplant, anything else you want to share with our viewers? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that I've learned throughout this is just never to give up hope, never to give up hope in yourself, never to give up hope in the people around you. It's so important to be able to go from sort of one milestone to the next and to do so without loss of enthusiasm. You know, these things can come up and, and there can be downfalls throughout, throughout the process, but I think it's so important to really take an attitude which is like, I'm gonna fight for myself. You know, it's not, this isn't over. This isn't like uh, the end. It's just a part of the process and to view it as such, I think is a really important part of how mentally to get through it. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think, you know, hope is a funny little medicine that's not prescribed. It's not, uh, you know, like in pill form ready for the taking, but if you nurture it, if you embrace, you know, part of part of your journey and, and those around you is just one that, you know, you'll get through it as long as you don't give up and give up, yeah, in yourself. What are you looking forward to most post COVID era? Yeah, it's a it's a funny question. So not funny, like ha ha funny, but one of the things that I've sort of noticed is I just have this, you know, second chance at life. It seems so trivial and small, but like just having the freedom to walk out the door and not have to worry about insulin. It, it seems like a silly thing, but it's it's a sense of freedom that I've never felt before. And um, so I'm looking forward to just being free um, and to having a life that uh, you know, is is abundant in experience and and you know giving back to all of those people and uh, those community members that really helped me. I, I think it's so important that you know if you're lucky to have the elevator sent up or whatever that expression is that you have to send it back down. Um, and I feel like I have these two new organs inside of me uh, that have changed my life, have changed my family's life, my friend's life, and. Uh, I want to live the best life for my donor and for myself and to treat, you know, them with the respect that they deserve and, and take advantage of every opportunity and take care of myself and be healthy uh, because I think that's the responsible thing to do and I also think that uh, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, thank you is not a big enough word. Um, I, I don't know at three months, I'll have the opportunity to send my donor family uh, a letter um, expressing my gratitude. And it's actually, I think, one of the greatest opportunities next to the organs that I've been given is to to truly express how this has impacted my life. Um, and yeah, I'm so grateful for, for the opportunity to say thank you and beyond.